Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Thursday live stream pop-up art hive with me, Mary Kay. Let's just see if everything's going smoothly. Can folks see me? Am I here? <laughs> what an interesting question to ask everybody. Am I here? <laughs> Let's see. If you can see me, if you can hear me, if you're out there watching, let me know. Having a bit of a frozen moment here. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to start uh, this video again. So folks, oh, you can see me. You can hear me. This is good then. This is good, then I will stay and I will hang out with everyone and make some art, even though in my window, I'm a little bit frozen. Tell you what, if things go a little wonky with this live stream today, can you let me know? And then I can start and stop and restart and everything will be fine. But for now, I am so happy to be here with you. Thank you so much for sharing space with me today. <sighs> here in Oshawa, it's a very interesting kind of, blue gray sky but there's sunlight right now and it looks like it's a beautiful beautiful early spring day i hope wherever you are right now that you're feeling a little bit of spring in your step in your life i hope that the skies are looking up and bright and that you're feeling okay healthy and okay wherever you might be welcome again to our live stream pop-up art studio and yep, looks like I'm not going to be able to see myself today, folks. So you're going to have to let me know if anything goes awry on the technical side. Um, but yeah, this is just a place where we can hang out, we can create and connect together. If you feel like joining in the chat and saying hello or sharing stories about how you're doing, what you're working on, uh, what things are like where you're at, please feel free. You can also make art along with me today or you can simply listen or watch along and do whatever feels right for you. That is the best way to approach this. This isn't an art class. It's not about me being here to teach you something. You're an expert in how you feel and who you are. So trust that and do what feels right to you. Of course, we ask that everyone who is participating in the chat today, and even if you're at home listening or watching on your own, please, be encouraging and supportive of one another. And of course, that includes yourself. You know what, I'm not the boss of you, but I know what it's like to have a really loud inner critic. I've got a whole bunch of them, a choir, I tend to call them. And sometimes they act up and it's really loud inside my head. If you're having one of those days and you're having a really hard time being kind and supportive to yourself, let us know. Maybe we can talk that inner critic out of it. Maybe we can learn what that inner critic wants. If it has nothing constructive to say, I will just take it and I will throw it out my window. Or we can delete it, crunch it, whatever you like. Let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. All is well. Of course, if you don't want to participate in the chat, as I've mentioned, that's okay too. You can listen and watch and do what you need to do to feel comfortable. And if that inner critic acts up, just tell it to, you know, ask it to be quiet. Ask it to set itself aside. Sometimes it helps to acknowledge that voice. And once we acknowledge it, it doesn't act up as much. So do what you can to be kind to yourself. Love yourself. Be compassionate. And allow your, yourself to do whatever you need to do this afternoon. Because these are interesting and uncertain times. And all we can do sometimes is <sighs> take a deep breath and accept that. Accept that's where we're at and that things will change, things are changing. And during that change time, there's no sense being mean to ourselves. So let's try being kind to ourselves instead. Of course, as I'm making today, let's see, I've got a whole bunch of creative stuff around me. I am I felt like some color this morning. That's why I had all that needle felting wool on hand. And I might get to some needle felting, but to start, I think I needed a little bit of, I need a little bit of a warm up. I need a little bit of, something to help ground myself in this afternoon. You're welcome to join me if you like. I'm going to be doing a little bit of watercoloring. So let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, hello everybody. Hello, hello, hello. So let's switch over and I'll get to work on that. 
If you've got some watercolors on hand, you can grab them and get creating. Oh, hello, Joanna from Cranbrook, Cranbrook, BC. Welcome. There's so many wonderful supporters the living room has from all across the country. And you know what? Even across the world, our community, this community, this creative community is so, so special, so powerful, so inspiring. Thank you for being out there and contributing in your way. All right, let me have some coffee. Oh, and Nicole is here as always, as every week to remind us what day it is today. So folks, if you didn't know, today is <laughs> submarine day. Now, is that a submarine sandwich or the submarine, you know, under the water machiney kind of beetles, yellow submarine thing? Keep us posted, Nicole. This is very important stuff. Ah, mm -mm. oh, delicious coffee. I have to thank the folks from Brew Wizards for my coffee. So yummy, so delicious. And I'm running out, so I'm gonna have to go back and stock up on some coffee soon. Now again, for folks who are joining us, if this is your first time, this is just an opportunity for us to hang out and create and connect with one another. And sometimes creating isn't so much about the products that we're making. Always it's about the process we are engaging in. But sometimes what we're creating is ourselves or we're creating a moment for ourselves. So pay attention to that feeling. If what you need isn't so much to create a thing, perhaps you can spend some time creating that space you need for yourself, that energy that you'd like to have more of in your life. Taking some time to identify what that is. Oh, that's a beautiful thing to do for yourself. It's a beautiful, beautiful gift. And I don't know if we, well, I can only speak for myself, can't I? I certainly don't think I do that for myself enough. We're so busy. We're so committed to supporting other folks, to helping other things go right, to making sure we take care of the people we care about in our lives. But sometimes we forget about ourselves. So I'm here to remind you, take care of yourself. And if you need to create that moment for yourself, create that energy for yourself, please do. And Courtney, hello, Courtney. We have Wendy, we have Nicole, we have Joanna, we have Courtney. <laughs> I'm reminded of the show. Now, folks in Ontario, you might, I don't know if this was a cross Canada show or an international show, the polka dot door, where they used to look through that mirror and say hello to everyone they could see. Some days I feel like that, and maybe I should make myself one of those little handheld mirrors that I can look through and just see everyone through. So as we create this moment for ourselves, this energy for ourselves, again, taking a moment to think, what is it that I want more of in my life, more of in my day, more of in this moment? If you'd like to, if you are creating along with me, whatever it is you're working on, take a moment to just write that word down, that thought down. Make some space for it. Get it out of your head and onto the paper somehow and see what happens when you do that. I have taken some resist uh, fluid and I've written my word on the center of this page. I did it before the live stream because I wanted to give it some time to dry. Um, and this is a wonderful material, pretty gooey, doesn't last very long. In fact, mine was more like a, a kind of elastic band when I opened it today. But it's something you can paint on paper, paint over top of it, and once it dries, you can peel it off. And wherever, of course, the resist has been, there will not be any paint or any material on that section. So you've created this wonderful blank space in your larger image. You can also use a resist technique with things like crayons or a wax candle. So if you don't have something like that and you'd like to actually incorporate the word or the thought into your artwork, try using one of those, a white oil pastel, a white crayon, or just a clear uncolored candle to color in, to shape in that word, that symbol, that feeling that you want to have more of in your day. And look, we're getting some clarification from Nicole. Um, today is not so much about submarine sandwiches, if you were worried. I mean, it could be. If that's your jam, that's okay. Nothing like a really good submarine sandwich. 
but it is actually, uh, <laughs> and thank you. I love how you've sort of built upon my description. Nicole says, it is about the underwater machiney beetle submarine kind. So thank you. So for anyone out there who, you know what, just uh, cheers to submarines, wherever you might be. I hope you're having peaceful times and taking care of the world. Yeah. Interesting. Again. Pokeroo. Yes, Nicole, that's exactly it. Having a look through that mirror saying hello. So folks do know Poker, Polka Dot Door. Wow, it's been a long time since I've thought about that show. Oh. Maybe I'm in a little need of tending to that inner child and myself. Where did... Oh, haha. <laughs> It's one of those days where I forget my paint water and all I have is my drinking water. So I'm going to use my drinking water for my watercolors today. When in doubt, improvise. <sighs> so again, just reminding myself to breathe. Taking a moment to take stock, to check in with myself. Take it for granted sometimes that we know what we're feeling when we're feeling it, that it's easy to be in that place where we're on top of everything. And we are on top of so much. But if you haven't checked in with yourself in a little while, if you haven't taken a moment to ask yourself how you're doing, maybe give that gift to yourself right now. And hello, Momo. Working and listening, says Momo. Hello to everyone. Hello to you too, Momo. And hello to Montreal. All the love. All the love to Montreal and our friends in Quebec. And Jay. Hello, Jay. How are you? How is the beautiful fam? I've been thinking about everyone out there in the community. The folks that are here with us the regulars for the live streams and all our online activities. <laughs> oh, the hearts, so lovely. And I've been thinking about the folks that we haven't seen in a long time, the folks we may not often get a chance to connect with these days because we don't, they may not have access to technology in the same way, or perhaps their schedules don't allow them to participate when things are in live stream. I say hello to everyone and I send so much love out your way. And I'm thinking about folks who might be going through strange, uncertain, or even difficult times. Yeah, we're missing you too, Jay. Um, I want you to know that I'm thinking about you. I'm sending energy your way. And I hope that whenever you are able to watch this, or perhaps even if you might hear, just hear from somebody else who has watched or listened that we're thinking of you, but that brings a boost to your day. I've just wet the sheet of watercolor paper here and inspired a little bit by the workshop that Kat and Caitlin did last night for the Tuesday Wellness Art Group, the art Zoom that they do. I'm going to choose colors that help me feel that help me feel hopeful because that is my word. That is what I want to attract more of into my life right now. Not in a magical, whimsical way, but in a really concrete, what does hope feel like? What does hope look like? What does it look like right now? Because hope is one of those interesting things that looks very different to every single person out there, depending on where you're at right now. And Nicole says, Nicole says, I was watching a show last week and someone com <laughs> committed what should be considered a strange crime. They ate all the fruit from the bottom of a yogurt cup and then put it back in the fridge. <laughs> oh, Nicole, you know what? That is a strange crime. I agree with you. And such a quirky, quirky thing. How lucky we are to have Nicole be here to make us laugh and to get us thinking about the things that we don't often think about. I appreciate that so much. <laughs> and Courtney says, that was awesome. And Courtney, are you referring to the wellness, uh, the wellness art group, the wellness art zoom that I was mentioning? 
It is a fantastic group. And for folks, I know sometimes we're not always able to join, but for folks who are interested every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m., there's a small wellness art Zoom that Caitlin or Kat, and sometimes Caitlin and Kat host together. It's an hour of guided art making inspired by wellness and I feel like very positive, positive things. We're not digging deep into dark or difficult things, although sometimes they come up, but basically it's a time to come together to explore what lifts us up. Perhaps the things we already possess or have inside of us that we can draw upon to feel inspired, creative, whole, connected, all of those things. And Courtney says, yes, so it is about that group. And Courtney says, you will see my face because I think Courtney's, yep, Courtney says, I'm always there. It's amazing. So that is an extraordinary testimony, a testimonial for that group. And if you're interested in learning more, you can check out the Facebook event for that. We post it every week. And if you have any questions, you can message the living room or message that event and we can pass it on to the coordinators who host it because I think we can all use a little more wellness in our life these days. And wellness, like hope, can look like a lot of different things, right? That's contextual. <laughs> and sometimes it's just about setting that time aside for yourself where you can to ex explore those things, where you can give you those things to yourself. Because again, like I was mentioning, we don't always allow that time for ourselves. And it's not because we don't want to, we just forget, we get too busy, other things take priority. And sometimes the things that take priority are really difficult things, right? And I think, and Courtney, you can help me, rec you know, you can sort of correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like with those, especially with those two coordinators, and that really positive approach that it really is about being wherever you need to be in whatever place you're at, working with what you're feeling at that moment. There's no expectations to be any certain way or to feel or not feel anything, just to be where you're at in that moment and find that, that self, that acceptance so that we can allow new things in and move on if we want to, or celebrate and strengthen the positive things that we do want to build upon. Again, Caitlin and Kat, two extraordinary people. Might be having a little interview with them too in an artist chat coming up soon. A duo, a dynamic duo interview, we'll see. <laughs> But if folks are joining us right now, I'm just working on this watercolor. I'm filling the page as a warm up with color. The colors that for me represent the things that I'd like to have a little bit more of in my day on the theme for me of hope, what hope looks like. And Courtney says, mm, my words are joy and smiles because recently had something positive happen and I just want to keep the smiles and joy in my heart. I want to bask in those feelings as it's been a long time since my emotions have been positive. Well, bask away, Courtney. That is a beautiful thing. I'm so happy. Happy you've, your joy has brought me some joy. So thank you for sharing that. It is really interesting taking time to celebrate, to honor the, the things that uplift us, those moments that are, positive and powerful in ourselves too. There's something really beautiful about that, about giving space and time and marking those moments and holding on to them, not necessarily to prevent them from changing or evolving, but just to really fully enjoy them, really be present in that moment of joy. I can think of a few other things that are as important as that. And, oh, Simone, hello. Hello from Toronto. This is my first time here in real time. Oh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, I'm starting a spring landscape drawing on the theme of peace. Oh, <sighs> that sounds beautiful, beautiful. And I feel like I, it resonates a little bit about with what I'm feeling inside as well. I think with this feeling of hope is, it's partnered very closely to spring and this idea of, new growth and new possibility and green, just the beautiful bursts 
of life, the color of life that we see happening in the springtime. I'm so excited for it. I feel like I've been waiting for it for so long. I'm just, I want to fill it, fill up my space, fill up my senses with that. Which also reminds me there might be a virtual art hive coming up. I saw it today posted on the International Art Hive. I think Rochelle posted it. There's something, a virtual art hive and a virtual, maybe a gallery tour coming out us from Montreal on that theme of green. I'll have to find it and post it in the show and tell. But thank you so much for sharing, Simone. If other people want to share what you're working on as well, you know I love to hear what you're working on. Makes me feel like we're all sharing space. No, no pressure to if you don't feel like it. But if you are excited about something, if you have a project that's bringing you joy or some kind of excitement or who knows, maybe you have a project that you're troubleshooting and you've hit a sticky spot and you'd like to get some advice from the community, feel free to share it here. And let's, let's share that creative energy and the resources we already have in this beautiful space. And Momo says, so funny, when I came in, I read nope. <laughs> Then I read dope, and now you see hope. <laughs> in my in the piece I'm working on, yes, there is hope, but I'll tell you, Mama, I'm going to be honest with you. I have felt all of those things today. <laughs> I felt, I have, I've had my moments of nope. I've had my feelings of dope. And uh, I finally come into a little bit of hope now. So that makes sense to me, that little journey you took with this piece of art. I've been taking that journey too. <laughs> and uh, hello, wow, India, hello, India. Uh, Mary saying, how do you like your coffee? I'm about 50 feet from Brew Wizards and about 180 feet from the living room. Oh my goodness, India, how s that is the kindest, I think, I'm, I mean, I don't wanna make any assumptions here, but what a wonderful offering. How beautiful, um, well, you know what, I, I'm, I love my coffee any which way, except I'm vegan, so no cream, but I will ask you to hold off on today. Who knows, maybe I might take you up on that another day, but I'm gonna ask you to hold off on that, I think, wonderful suggestion of a coffee delivery, um, only because I'm not actually at the living room. So for folks who are watching and tuning in, the living room space, as so many people knew it and uh, came to love it, we, we had to close that space in October. I know, it's very sad, it's still, <sighs> Still hurts a little bit every time I talk about that, but mostly because uh, we wanted to make use of the resources we had to be positive and evaluate what we could do instead of focusing on what we couldn't do and paying rent on a space we couldn't use didn't seem like the best choice for us at that time and still it's not the best choice. However, that being said, uh, we did receive a wonderful grant from the Ontario Trillium Foundation, which is allowing us to create a mobile art studio. So folks, hang in there, hang in there, hold on, because you haven't seen the last of the actual living room space. It's gonna look a little different when we come back, but it will be mobile and we can bring it to you. I think I might just park it outside of Brew Wizards once we have it and uh, then I have and never ending source of coffee right there, right? I haven't talked to them about that yet. It's just an idea, but I don't think they'd mind, right? Right? <laughs> but what a wonderful, beautiful, beautiful gesture that fills my heart with joy too. What a beautiful community we have out there. And one day, India, I might take you up on that. I might just. So it's out there now. You're in my head. And Courtney says, welcome, Simone. And you're, oh, you're awesome. And I'm glad you're here. So look at that loveliness. People welcome on one another, just like we were, if we were actually in the community space, that's kind of what would be happening, wouldn't it? We'd be saying hello to one another. If I was back at that counter, pouring myself some coffee or washing some dishes, there'd be other people in the space welcoming you, saying hi. Every once in a while, I might get a shout when someone wants to see me or needs something. But otherwise, that's one of the things I love about art hives, virtual and physical art hives, is that we tend to take care of one another. The community, you know, once we understand what it's about and once we feel like we have some kind of relationship with the people in the spaces we've co-created, we, we take care of one another. We look to one another, we hear and see one another. And I have to be honest, I've seen that replicated here in the virtual space as well. So 
that gives me an enormous amount of hope, knowing that spaces might change. But it's, it's not about the building, it's not about the physical space, it's about the people that create the space. We do that together. And that can be done, we can create that space anywhere, anywhere. And Nicole says, you inspired me to needle felt today. I, oh, excellent. I bought a set of stickers of a cute character that looks like a mixture of an ink blot and a grim reaper quite a few years ago. His name is Inky, so I thought I'd make him for myself. Fantastic, that's brilliant. And Wendy says, I'm working on felting a miniature of my cat. Oh, Wendy, that's, again, I'm not the boss of anybody, but if you feel like sharing pictures of what you create today, uh, you're more than welcome to. We have a little show and tell post that we put up on the Facebook page after the live stream is done. And you are welcome to share images, links, um, just highlighting and shining a light on what you're working on, works in progress, of course, welcome. Just to celebrate who we are, what we do, the kinds of stories we tell together. And everyone's stories. It, our stories are so important. And that's all that art is at the end of the day, I think. It's a way of communicating, of connecting with people. It's an extraordinary, beautiful thing that all of us can do if we want to. And the needle felting of the cat. Oh, are you using your cat's fur to needle felt that, Wendy? I'm curious because I know that I haven't tried it yet, but it is possible to use cat hair to needle felt with. And I wanted to do that for a long time. I've actually been saving bags of my cat's hair to try this out. So Wendy, you might've just inspired me to finally get going on that project. And I, since uh, we, we had our first Tuesday morning wake up art hive, our virtual art hive Zoom from 9.30 to 10.30 and uh, I have an enormous pile of mending I've been meaning to get to and I finally got started on it in the virtual Zoom that we had and I was needle felting so I was so happy that I was able to cover holes in my jersey tops and things like that with needle felting and now I'm a little bit addicted which is one of the reasons why I have it on hand today because once I got started I just I couldn't stop. I'm loving needle felting. And if I could needle felt with my cat's hair, well, then I have an endless resource. I have an endless material source with my four cats. <laughs> and it's good that, you know, they can feel useful. They can, you know, help pay their keep. And Simone saying, oh, just thanking, oh, thanking everyone, thanking Courtney for welcoming her. And it's so great. I am so glad that we have new people joining us. Our community is expanding. We're learning about and discovering one another. In spite of, you know, such strange and difficult times. I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels this, but I'm sure there are people out there who, who are feeling somehow more connected. Not always, we don't always have the quality of connection we might need in a moment but I am astonished and so inspired by how we've found ways to stay connected. And anyone, if you were listening this week, I finally managed to interview Yafa for our uh, live stream Instagram artist chat. It wasn't on Instagram in the end, but it was on Facebook and you can still watch it. It's in the, the Facebook page today. And Yafa is an artist from Cornwall who has founded an art hive, but is also looking for ways to connect and create and share their knowledge with folks on online during this time. Uh, such an inspiring interview, just a bunch of beautiful, like the energy is just sunshine. And yes, if you haven't had a chance to watch or listen, I definitely recommend it. Another person that I wouldn't have met if not for these difficult, strange times we find ourselves in. And Joanna saying, that's what I think is so beautiful about art hives. Excellent, yes, I want to start one here in Cranbrook. Go for it, Joanna. Sorry, that came out a little too forceful. I feel like I just yelled at you <laughs> through, 
through the computer. I hope it didn't come across as aggressive as it sounded in my head. But uh, I'm always, when people come to me saying, you know, should I start an archive? I want to start an archive. The answer for me is always yes. If you feel called to it, if it's something that brings you joy, there are so many ways to start our hive too. It doesn't need to look like this hive. In fact, I often think that's one of the things I love about art hives as well. They look, they look like, they somehow feel, look like they are, they replicate something about the communities that they are, uh, they are in. So it's another reason why we can never have too many art hives in my mind because even if every street had their own art hive, it would probably begin, it would look like and replicate the energy, the quality of that street or that neighborhood. And perhaps we'd learn to observe and appreciate the characteristics of those, even those micro communities that are so special, that make, you know, living where we live and studying or working where we study or work or playing where we play so interesting and dynamic. And I don't know if we spend enough time really considering that. You know, we go from here to there, we do what we need to do to get by. But taking time to be in a space, to listen to that space, that community, it's a beautiful thing. And art hives allow that somehow. They allow people to listen to one another, but also listen to the environment in which they're in. So go for it. If you want to start an art hive, go for it. And Cranbrook, I've never been west. I've never been west of Ontario, so it's definitely on my to-do list. Um, but I think that would, if I could travel, if I had a magic wand, I think that would be my, that would be one of my travel dreams, to go from art hive to art hive across the country to learn about this country and to learn about communities and just to absorb the different kinds of creativity. And, well, you know this, Joanna, dream big, start small. Like when Yaffa started her art hive, it was in her front garden during the pandemic, wearing masks, just some art supplies set out in her front yard. And people found, you find a way to connect with people who are looking for that same thing. So again, if you didn't have a chance, Joanna, you might actually enjoy the interview that we did with Yaffa because she talks, talks about the starting of her art hive and what it was like. And Wendy saying, yes. Okay. So you have used, uh, so you've, we're talking about the needle felting of the cats and using cat hair. And Wendy's saying, yes, I've used some wool as a base and adding your cat's fur to the outside of that base. I'm so excited to see how that works out. So excited. <laughs> Nicole saying, I'm debating trying punch needling. Hmm. How many other folks out there have tried punch needling? If you've got an opinion, please feel free to share. I think I've tried punch needling a few times. I love the look, the quality of it. So I'd say if you, if you can, if you can, you know, if you're open to taking some time to experiment, go for it. Um, sometimes I find it a little, maybe it's just depending on the needle you use, the type of needles you use. Sometimes I find it a little tricky, a little fussy to thread and, uh, and I'm sometimes, as you know, folks, I'm a very impatient creator, so. But if you're not as impatient as I am, and Nicole, I think you are not impatient, um, or I think you are patient if we flip it around <laughs> to a more positive approach, I think you might really enjoy it. And let's see, oh, my excited voice. Yes, so assertive, aggressive, excited. That's one of my many excited voices. I have, in the past, in the studio, really yelled when I'm excited, uh, when I get carried away with something. And it has, from time to time, surprised people who are nearby. But, you know, it is what it is. And Joanna says, I signed up for the Spring Art Institute with Rachel Cheney. Yes, oh, Rachel is amazing. You will love everyone who's a part of that symposium. Um, I think a lot of us who might be watching or listening here who are a part of the Art Hive movement have at one time or another taken uh, that program or one like it through the Concordia Art Hives Network. It's really lovely. And one of the things I love the most about it, and other folks can comment on it here as well, is uh, just how, how healing, how comforting, how encouraging and empowering it was to connect with other like-minded individuals. And 
for example, to know that we are out there and that you are out there and that we can turn to one another as resources when we need to, to ask questions, to troubleshoot things, to share what we're going through. It's a beautiful thing. And uh, yeah, I, that, that program was amazing. I would, I would take it again. I would take it again in a heartbeat. Yeah. And Momo says, a new art hive? Yes! An art hive in every neighborhood. That is the dream. I definitely agree. See, you're not alone, Joanna. You're not alone. And India says, ooh, Angel, people still leave stuff in front of the Simcoe space. Come back soon. Oh, they do? <sighs> I bet the tenants don't like that so much. Well, you know what? That is a really lovely thing to know that people still think of us as being a part of that community, which is still a part of my community. I'm not so far away. Um, oh, how lovely. I, I'm torn there because I would love to go back, but I think, I think a new business might have moved in, which is exciting to know because I love that neighborhood. I miss Cops Records. I miss paraphernalia books and stuff. I miss being beside Cornerstone and having that wonderful community there too. Just being in the heart of everything in downtown Oshawa. But we'll, you know, we're not, we're not, you can't get rid of us that fast. Not you, but you know, the pandemic life. We're still here. We're still here and we're figuring out, figuring out a way to get out there and connect with people again. Yeah, soon, hopefully soon. Mm. And Simone saying, Art Hive is one of the first places I felt like I really fit in during university. More Art Hives, yes, I agree. How many folks out there can relate to that, that feeling of, you know, wherever you are, if you've experienced an art hive, maybe you've only ever experienced a virtual art hive, and that's okay too. That feeling of, I'm not alone. I feel connected. I feel seen. I feel heard. I feel acknowledged. I think a lot of people have had that experience. So, and you don't know what that is. Interesting. Courtney, so is that uh, the symposium, the art hive course? Well, I think Momo's about to explain it. So Momo says, by the way, the art hive institute is coming up. So here's the link for anyone interested, and I will try and post it afterwards as well. The Art Hive Institute is kind of like a training program, um, a session, an educational course. It's like an intensive experience where people come together who are interested in art hives, interested in either, you could be interested in creating an art hive. So Courtney, this might be something to look into yourself as well. Um, you might be interested in creating an art hive. You might be interested in learning more about the art hive. There might be specific things in uh, in managing, uh, working with, engaging with community that you're interested to learn more about. And all of these things are touched upon or covered in the Institute. So it's like a, a really intensive workshop program that I think is several days long. It used to take place in person in Montreal, but I imagine right now, it is online, so anyone anywhere can take part. So if you're watching or listening, check out the link that Momo has posted there. And you can also visit the arthives.org website. You can also visit the Art Hives Facebook page. I'm sure that link is there and you can learn more about the experience. It's fantastic. I can't recommend it enough. And Nicole, oh, what is punch needling? Courtney's asking. So, all right. <laughs> uh, punch needling is a, oh. Nicole, maybe you can explain it better than I can. Use a device that is threaded with embroidery thread or perhaps cruel yarn, and it punctures the, the fabric you're working on. So you might have fabric in an embroidery hoop and you puncture the hoop or the fabric with the needle punch, and it creates little loops of fabric or little loops of thread into the fabric that you're working with. So it's kind of like a miniature, a micro, rug hooking experience, if you think about it that way. And you just create really interesting designs, textures, it's painting with thread, but in a slightly different way to embroidery. A lot of textile or fiber, fiber artists combine the two, so they might embroider things and then add punch needle elements on it too. And sometimes you get uh, kind of like a, ra a raised, um, what they might call a pile, like a carpet pile, but in thread. So you get these little, mats of looped embroidery thread that are kind of fun, cool textures. It was a huge arts and crafts trend in the 70s. So you might even have seen things uh, coming up in thrift stores where like little like patches, punch needle patches or 
little um, embellishments on clothes. I don't know the history of it. I don't know where it came from though. So if anyone's watching, if you know, feel free to put it in the comments. And Nicole's saying that they've been watching pretty hard cases and decided to look up the main villain, a voice actress named Tara Strong. I watched a video where she analyzed people's impressions of her characters. It was interesting how she gave tips on how to improve and Oh, interesting. And the reasoning behind why. So it sounds like, is Tara Strong a voice actor? Oh, interesting. You know, that's my, like my other passion is that performance. So there we go. And Joanna saying on a different topic, has anyone read the precious book, The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse? Yes, by Charlie Mackesy, I believe. Is that his name? So folks, I'm just gonna put this aside to dry and I'm gonna come back to it in the end. And as we're talking about punch needling and all that exciting stuff, I'm gonna bit, I'm gonna work a little bit on that, on my needle felting. So for folks who haven't read this book and just a note, it looks like Momo, oh, fantastic, has shared uh, the archives.org website link in, in the thread as well. The Institute, the Archive Institute is spread over three Fridays, so it's easier to digest for our online world. I certainly appreciate that too. So don't worry, you're not gonna be sitting in front of a computer for, you know, eight hours a day. It looks like it'll be three really fabulous Fridays that you get to spend with people, like-minded people who are all passionate about and interested in how they can connect and create with their communities more effectively. Such a beautiful thing. And uh, yes, so that Charlie Mackesy is right. Excellent. So yes, that's his name. Highly recommend. This book for folks who are interested is very, it is very special. I think precious is a really lovely way of describing it. All right, let's get my things going here. It was given to me as a gift and from a dear friend and I wouldn't have known about this book otherwise. I think it's a British, he's a UK based artist or author, both artist and author. And for anyone who is looking for a little tiny poetic escape, and it's, I think a book that speaks and resonates with or for all ages, all abilities, all walks of life. It deals with some beautiful, and there's Carlos. Um, Carlos, we were just talking about the, beautiful Charles Mackesy book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. This book is extraordinary. It deals with some pretty profound and beautiful, elegant life experiences, but communicates them through the story of these four characters and how they travel with one another through the world, how they experience the world together. And it's beautiful and it's moving. When I read it, uh, it made me laugh. It made me cry. It warmed my heart. It inspired me and it's a book I turn to fairly f regularly, at least once a week, I'm dipping into this book. It's also the kind of book you can just open a page and just to see that one page and see what it, what it tells you, what you need from it. Can't recommend it enough. It's just beautiful. And Carlos saying, howdy y'all. I hope you're all having a good and safe week. Very cool art as always, Mary. Well, thank you, Carlos. And loving the message there too. Yes, indeed. I'm going to be returning to that piece in a little while after it draws, um, dries to move the resist, peel the resist away and we'll see what it looks like. And Carlos says, yes, ah, that book is so beautiful in so many ways in such a wonderful narrative. I, yep, yeah, it's, ah, yeah, I can't recommend it enough. If you're looking for a story, if you're looking for a little escape, a narrative resource, that's the book. And I have to look up because I always get the, the animals in the wrong order, the boy, the mole, the fox and the horse. Joanna, thank you for bringing it up. Such a creative, everything, art, writing, poetry, yeah. It's really beautiful. It's so very beautiful. So what am I going to do here? Good question. When I was mending my shirt in the Tuesday morning wake up art hive zoom, and that's what we're calling it because I like giving things really long names, you know, like the living room community art studio. I, I have to give things the longest name possible. It's just who I am. I got to do that. I got to make things a little bit difficult. I got to make people work 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 for their art hive stuff in Oshawa. 
<laughs> I after I I was needle felting the holes to cover the holes in my shirt. Um, I fell in love with the idea of well, just exploring what other fabrics can I what other fabrics can I needle felt on because I think I've. I've thought of it like creating interesting shapes and forms, like the beautiful, you know, the cat that Wendy's making, like almost like mini stuffies. But I also want to explore perhaps making jewelry or pendants or sensory pieces that we can carry around, that I can carry around in my pocket. And on the theme of spring and hope and all that lovely green that I want to invite into my life and into my head. Uh, I'm going to try creating some leaves, some needle felted leaves on these denim pieces that I have, these repurposed denim pieces. So bear with me, I haven't tried needle felting on denim before. We'll see how it goes. It could be another wonderful uh, disaster slash learning experience. But got to start somewhere, right? And Nicole is providing some clarity. So Tara Strong voiced Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls, Timmy from Fairly Odd Parents, Twilight Sparkle from My Little Pony. Who, so Tara Strong is a, a Canadian voiceover artist, I imagine. Is that true? Uh, we have a lot of amazing voiceover talent in this country. Um, as well, all voice acting talent is it's such a special and unique part of performance in the acting world. People don't often think of it as acting, but it absolutely is. It's a beautiful art form. So let's see. And Momo saying, oh, by the way, a poet in our Art Hive community is looking for someone that could translate two or three of her poems from French to English, but keeping the beauty of the poem. Oh, excellent. Is anyone here a bilingual poet that would like to help her? Let Momo know. So. If anyone out there is listening, either during the live part of the live stream, or perhaps if you're watching after it's been archived, if this is you, if you are someone who can translate uh, French to English, but understand the nuances of French language and the poetry there so that you can capture the essence of the poem, reach out, let us know, and we will connect you with Momo, if that's okay, Momo. And we can link these artists so that we can collaborate and Share the beauty. That's extraordinary. Uh, that makes me so very happy to hear that. It wouldn't be the first time that artists have found one another through archives and been able to be a resource to one another to help projects come to life. So thank you, Momo, for letting us know. I know from time to time, people often look for illustrators as well, people who can help design or tell their stories in a visual way. It's very exciting. And Carlos saying, if you're unable to afford the book, Charlie Mackesy, the artist and author of The Boy, the, the Fox, the Mole, the Horse. I know I didn't get that in the right order. I apologize. Uh, he posts snippets from the book to their Facebook page regularly. It's just such a beautiful style of telling us that, the, um, that life can be tough, but we're not alone and we'll get through we'll get through. Yeah, that's, I think one of the reasons why I can turn to that book, whatever I might be feeling, whatever place I might be in, positive, negative, difficult, goofy, silly, loving, every page of that book is so beautiful and human and speaks on so many levels. You'll never get bored of that book, but if you can't afford it, Carlos, thank you. You can visit the Facebook page and appreciate it all the same. And of course you can always, don't forget libraries are still resources even during the pandemic, whether your library is open or closed right now. If you'd like to see certain books at your library and they're not there, let them know. Ask them if they can carry, uh, carry these, these, these books. That's part of their job. It's one of the reasons why they're there. So maybe this is a book we need to ask for them to have on the shelves or made available through eBooks. And Simone said, I really enjoyed your live stream on still life the other day. Oh, thank you so much. It was nice to get back to basics and remember, <laughs> remembering having to sketch those shapes in art school takes you back. Took me back too. Oh my goodness. 
Let's see. Um, I always like the process of shading, even though it's tricky. It really brings things to life and it reminds me of the importance of value. Oh, even value, that's a word I haven't thought about in a long time. Isn't it funny what we learn and then what our brains kind of push out or push to the back. I really enjoyed that live stream as well. And it's, so for folks who are interested for the next few weeks, uh, on Monday evenings at 7 p.m. on Instagram, I will be working with Durham College Fine Year, uh, third year fine arts students who are a part of uh, the community collaboration class that's taught by Danny Crosby, who is an extraordinary Durham region-based artist and teacher and just an all around awesome human being. And these students will be teaching me different things, taking me through different activities, some activities that I'm not familiar with. I think this Monday I will be creating a character with the help of the community. So you can help design this character with me, with Jessica Luke. So you can find their work on Instagram at Jessica underscore Luke, I believe. And Jessica and the community are going to be helping me create a character together. And character creation through drawing and that visual art form, something that I haven't really done in a long time. So I'm really excited about giving it a go. And this past week, yeah, it was, I forget how enjoyable it can be to revisit just basic fundamental art skills sometimes. I think when, when I was in school, when I was learning things like that, I didn't really appreciate them. And it's only now that I've been out of school for a while that I can begin to revisit them, but because I want to, not because I have to. And I think when we have a choice to engage in something, it's much more powerful. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I'll be returning to that and using those skills again and again and again. And it was so meditative. I really enjoyed it. It was so relaxing to just spend time shading in those shapes, just being with those shapes. sound of the, the needle punching on the denim is really interesting. Let's see here. And Momo says, Gracias, Carlos, following CM now. Excellent, yes. Oh, Momo, if you haven't heard, it's just lovely. And it is a great book. So thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing that, Carlos. A beautiful lift to anyone's days. Beautiful, profound, elegant, poetic, warm-hearted. All beautiful things that I can, all beautiful words to describe Charlie Mackesy's book. And Joanna saying, will the Monday evening Instagram be recorded to watch if you can't make it? So yes, in short, yes. So all of the things we do, whether on Facebook or Instagram, they, uh, we archive them to the page so you can go back. They'll just stay up once we've uploaded them on that page and you can revisit them. So that's the same for any of the live streams we've done on with artist chats or these on Facebook. You can go back and revisit the ones we've done in the past. And it can be difficult to search through things sometimes on Facebook or Instagram because of all the other posts. So we also try to upload everything to YouTube afterwards. So for folks who don't know, The Living Room does have a YouTube channel uh, where you can see all the past artist chats and all the past, you know, virtual pop-up art hives that we've done, plus lots of other interesting videos and creative kind of artist spotlights and skill shares that we've done in the past. Again, there are just so many amazing ways to document and share what we've done to celebrate our creative community. Never a dull moment. <laughs> and I love it, Carlos and Momo. All that love for sharing the resources. You know what, if there are folks out there, if there's something else that you really enjoy, something that you appreciate and you wanna share, a resource, a book, a poem, please feel free to put it up. Share links to what we love, things that might inspire us. We can all use a little inspiration from time to time, right?
Mm-hmm. And my needle felting here. This is this is good. This experiment is working. I'm glad. Next time you see me, I might just be covered in needle felted patches. Everything I'm wearing might have needle felted patches on it, just because. I had a dream of this piece. Not a sleeping dream, but just, you know, something, an image gets stuck in your mind. And you start seeing it everywhere else when you're looking around. I'd like to create a collar necklace of needle felted leaves. A wreath of green to wear around my neck. So we'll see. It might take a while to get every leaf just so, but I'm, hey, I've got some time. And as we're talking about other things for folks who might be interested, as we we're talking about the Monday live stream skill shares that are happening, um, we also have starting next week, our placement students, the living rooms placement students will also be uh, hosting their own Zoom workshops that you can join. Danielle, every Thursday from 11 to 12, will be hosting a spoken word creation, kind of like an intro to spoken word. Marta, every Monday, will be hosting a workshop from 10 to 11 a.m. about, well, I think they'll be creating a combination of painting and embroidery. So you'll be able to work on these canvases to create certain images. Um, that are meaningful to you. And I think it'll start in, over the th course of the three workshops, you'll be able to complete your piece together. And then we have on Fridays, uh, Maddie, our student will be working on, I'm not sure exactly what it is yet. We're still finessing it. We're still figuring it out, but uh, something involving music. So it'll be a Zoom workshop that highlights how music has, you know, how music helps us, how it, improves our lives, how we use it as a tool for self-care or wellness or enjoyment. So keep an eye out for those. They're Zoom workshops, opportunities to come together to connect. Unfortunately, those won't be archived. But if people miss them and you really want to take part, maybe we can find ways to bring them back in other kinds of workshops or live streams that everyone can participate in or watch afterwards. And Wendy's saying, oh, interesting. Wendy's been playing around felting shapes to make brooches. We are on the same page, Wendy. I've, I would love to see some of the things you've been working on. Something just again about like, maybe it's part of the spring and I know I'm excited to, you know, get gardening and just begin, get my hands in the ground. There's something so tactile about needle felting, about sculpting with textiles and threads and fabrics and I just I'm really really loving it I'm looking forward to seeing what we can all the different things we can do with it and all the different gifts we can create for one another perhaps and let's see and it's almost three o'clock wow how the time flies folks you help these afternoons go by so quickly I enjoy them so much if you're tuning in right now, welcome. Welcome to our Wednesday afternoon pop-up art hives. It's so great to have you here, whether you're participating in the chat or just watching or listening from wherever you're at, including you folks who are listening after it's been archived. You count too. We feel your energy all the same. I should mention, I would be remiss if I didn't mention this Thursday, we have Thursday evenings, we have a pop-up live stream art hangout similar to this. It runs from 7 till 8 p.m. This Thursday night, we have a celebration of spring, but in the form of 
uh, the celebration of Persian New Year. So one of our, uh, an old placement student who is also uh, an art therapist or art therapist candidate, Nafise Mustafi, will be joining us this Thursday to celebrate uh, Persian New Year and the arrival of spring and sharing some of the cultural traditions around Persian New Year and what it means and how each one of us can celebrate and welcome spring into our homes. It's a season of new growth and change and, you know, positive transition, new life, all these wonderful things. And Nafase will be joining you. So Thursday from 7 to 8 p.m. on Facebook for a live stream just like this to share some of those traditions and what they mean to her. So if you're interested in learning more about this festival, about the traditions that are involved and how you can appreciate and maybe include some of them, please do. Please drop by, say hi. And Nicole says, I'm making a, f a fillet crochet iris right now. I hope I pronounced that right. Is that right? It's a way of making a lacy mesh out of a lacy mesh based on, oh, based on a graph and a series of solid and blank sections make images. Just the way you described that, it kind of reminded me of um, weaving patterns, how they're in black and white and have the different squares that tell you where, how things should be layered and tied into one another. That sounds really beautiful. And of course, irises, another symbol of spring, another beautiful, beautiful flower that arrives just in time when we need it most. Mm. Yeah, spring is in the air. Just looking outside my window again right now, it's still lightly gray skies, but the sun is out and that's all I need, a little bit of sun. <laughs> Appreciating the small things that can brighten up the day and just change the way you look at things. Mm. Oh, lovely. Joanna says, I am making birthday cards for a one-year-old and a 60-year-old. <laughs> That's beautiful as well. Oh, oh, how wonderful. I do, oh birthdays, moments, appreciating the people we have in our lives. Everything made a little more interesting, a little more challenging this year, but boy, have we gotten resourceful, right? My shout out and love goes to everyone out there who has found ways to celebrate, celebrate one another, celebrate themselves to make memories in strange and uncertain times. Cards like that certainly help. And we've talked about snail mail here in the live stream before. I think if you can send someone a piece of snail mail, a postcard, a letter, a card. And you know what? We don't need special occasions to do that. We can just send it just because. I encourage you to go for it. Send out a message. Send out something to someone you care about. I'm not the boss of you. Look at me telling you what to do. I'm not the boss of you. But tell me, so that's for folks out there. And I, if you've received a piece of snail mail in the last few months, how has it made you feel? Like, how does it make you feel? How did it make you feel? How did it change your day? So I think sometimes we take it for, we might take it for granted, but for a lot of us, at least myself, opening up the mailbox and seeing a package there, seeing something other than a bill or a flyer, really, truly lovely. Just 
finding the ways to bring those lifts to someone's day. Lift up someone's day with some snail mail. I think those are part of the memories we'll take away from this strange year. The things that lifted us up, the things that brightened our days. How we learned how to make memories in new ways and celebrate one another without being able to be there in person. Nicole says, the white part of Inky's face, oh yes, so you're working on the needle felting. The white part of Inky's face is kind of fuzzy, so right now he has a mustache. <laughs> Yeah, it is interesting when the one thing I'm learning working with the needle felt, needle felting techniques is they go through, it's like the, these various stages of the process. It's really, really, really fascinating to see how things change, how the texture evolves. I think it's definitely one of those things that you learn by doing and you kind of find your style, you find your way with it, your own way too. I watched some videos, I watched some tutorials, the same thing as everybody else does, I'm sure, when you're looking to pick something else up, a new thing up. But really, it's about getting stuck in and trying it and learning how you do it. Now when this is done, I think I might, I'm really liking how this is turning out. I'll just flip it over to see the back. The back is really interesting as well, very fuzzy. Oh, so much fun. Yeah. A textural delight, I say. So I think once I get these done, I will cut them out. I'll trim them out and have a series of little leaves that I can tie together, overlap, stitch together, maybe add some additional embroidery to, maybe add a few beads, who knows? But again, just a lovely thing, a lovely creative process to lose yourself in. And if you're someone who likes exploring and feeling things out as you go, definitely recommend giving this a go if you have if you have the luck if you have the finances to be able to you know pick up some of the kits it's not so expensive you can find needle felting kits online now on sale I know there are some folks out there in the community who might be listening who also have supplies they can share with one another as so many of us do as creatives we tend to attract a lot of ideas and we love to share them when we can and oh, lovely in the, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. So just on that note of snail mail. Hello, Jenny, welcome. Jenny says, I'm coming in late. What is the base material you are felting in? So I'm using a piece of old denim. So this is a piece, I think it's a, it's an off cut from old jeans and I never throw away <laughs> my denim. I've recently begun repairing it and mending it with sashiko stitches and putting patches on everything. Denim, of course, is so like such a thirsty fabric and it takes such an extraordinary amount of water to create these jeans that we wear. So I really, I don't like throwing them away. Um, so when I can't repair them anymore, I cut them up and try to find other ways of using them. I know folks out there, we've talked about darn before, taking old jeans and turning them into denim yarn that we can create rag rugs and things like that with. And today I wanted to explore needle felting on them to see if it would give, uh, like how it would adhere. And you know what? It's really working very nicely. And I think I want to cut these out and create some fiber jewelry, some textile jewelry with them once I've done a number of leaves. I'm just having such a great time with this. Yeah, and I actually like the look of it on the back as well. Maybe I'll explore with using the reverse 
of some of these needle felted pieces too. But yeah, denim, who knew? And Simone saying, I love sending and receiving mail. I'm jealous of my Nana, who has the most pristine script style. Ooh, of writing? How beautiful. I can only aspire to have that kind of skill one day. Simone, if you are a fan of hand lettering, you might love B. Noonan. Bridget B. Noonan hosts the first Thursday of every month, hosts our Thursday night live streams, and hand lettering is one of the things B does. Self taught, um, just working on different kinds of handwriting of script, sometimes using ink and calligraphy pens, and sometimes just writing things out with ordinary household pens. And no, it's a kind of art form that we've lost touch with because it's not something that's taught in school anymore. And I started printing. I, f I don't even know if I know how to do um, cursive writing anymore. I know a lot of folks out there still do it. So if you want to share samples of it, go for it. But Definitely, there are folks we look up to in our life, and it sounds like your Nana is one of them who just have practiced and kept up those skills in cursive writing, and it's an absolute joy to read something that's shaped in that way for you, isn't it? It's just lovely. And Jay saying, there is something really soothing about the sound of the needle poking through the block. I know, maybe that's why I'm finding it so addictive. It is just that rhythmic sound. I'll get back to it after a moment, once I've had my coffee. <laughs> mm. And Nicole asking, how well does the needle felting wash? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't washed any of these pieces that I've done, but um, I'm, it actually can potentially make it stronger. So for anyone out there who has needle felted, or I guess it would be called wet felted, oftentimes the wool will become even stronger once it's washed, especially there's something about heat and the combination of the heat and the water. Um, I know at the studio, we had a wonderful workshop with Rosemary Oliver where we wool felted around bars of soap. And sometimes you'll see these in gift stores, these handmade beautiful pieces, and the wool becomes a kind of uh, sponge, like a hypoallergenic sponge around the soap and it shrinks with the soap. Uh, yeah, it's a really interesting process and everyone's probably had an experience of shrinking a sweater by accident. That's what happens when it gets washed. So you have to be careful that you don't shrink it. But if it's little patches like this on like repairing or mending clothes, I imagine it would be okay, especially if the item has been pre-washed and you're not doing something too, too big. But for the first wash, I might try and I'll test it out to let you know with the mending pieces I've been doing. I might try dampening those areas first and hair drying them and just watching them to see how much they shrink to see if it pulls the fabric in a weird and interesting way. I'll keep you posted. I'll keep you posted on that. Oh, Joe. Hello, Joe. Oh, lovely. And Simone. Oh, interesting talking about the sounds. Simone saying, I like the sound of the tape stretching in the beginning too. Well, maybe one time I'll do a live stream where I don't talk and it'll just be the sounds of the art making, a little bit of that kind of ASMR thing too. Hmm, maybe. That's a good idea, folks. Thanks for the idea. And Joe saying, hello, <laughs> good afternoon, <laughs> Mother Mary. Joe, I've told you, I'm, not, I'm no Mother Mary. Please don't burden me with that. It makes me nervous. Um, but I appreciate you being here, Joe. Uh, thank you for always as keeping us, oh, a part of the art world. You're already a part of the art world, Joe. You're already a part of the art world. You are, just because you are a creative being, just as you are. And Nicole saying, I always use cursive unless someone else has to read it. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. And yep, that type of writing, Joe, I agree. I love it as well. It's something that we don't often see, but when we do, boy, does it stand out now, doesn't it? And Jay, to add to what Mary is saying about it not being taught out to us anymore, cursive writing, I'm teaching my kids to write and cursive, you're to, oh, you're fantastic. You're teaching your kids to write cursive script. That's fantastic. Such an important subject. It's fascinating to see how language and communication evolves, isn't it? And this is one aspect of that, how we write to one another, the letters, the symbols that we use to communicate to one another. It would be really, really interesting to look, you know, in a few years to look back and to examine 
where cursive writing is. Maybe it'll come back and be really, really popular. Maybe it will just, it'll be something decorative and appreciated as an art form, the same way that calligraphy is in many parts of the world. Calligraphy, another beautiful uh, expression and hand lettering that was at one time so very common and now not so much. But keeping those traditions alive or those cultural expressions alive is important. Not necessarily as a way of, you know, I think human beings will always find a way to express ourselves and to communicate. But when we have those, well, it's nice to have options, isn't it? Just options about how we do that. And I don't think I'll ever be an elegant cursive writer, but it's fun to revisit it from time to time. And always appreciated to see how other people use it to create beautiful communications. And so this is good. Wendy says there is still, there's a little shrinking when you're washing felt. So just to keep in mind, if you are mending clothes like I am, it will probably shrink a little bit. So just to be on top of that. And I wonder with certain things, depending on how you're using them, there might be a little bit of resistance, but you know what? I'm going like through these experiments, I'll keep you posted. Oh, hello, kitty cat. I've got a kitty cat visiting me. Hello, Kaylee. <laughs> Sorry, my kids, my cats never visit me in the studio. It's always nice when they do. So yes, yeah, so a little bit of shrinking with the needle felting, uh, just something to be aware of, but we'll, yeah, we'll keep one another posted about this. And Nicole saying, even people who can write in cursive can't always read your writing. <laughs> the one place where I find cursive handy is in math. Interesting, Nicole, why is that? That feels like a whole other interesting new conversation. All right. And then Joe says, forgive me, but as I watch, are you hurting that little pillow or doing acupuncture? Oh, Joe. Joe, I'm needle felting. I think the pillow is fine. I'll check in with it and see, but seems okay. How are you doing, pillow? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a little piece of foam. Holds up really well over time. Sometimes, depending on how much I've been, you know, needle punching, there'll be a little divot, a little dent in it, but it seems to bounce back. Might need to replace it every little once in a while, but so far I haven't, I'm not needle punching as often as, you know, not so much that that would be necessary, but thank you for your concern for the pillow, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to revisit this piece now because I think it's dry enough. I'm going to try to remove some of the resist. All right, so let's see what happens. Here we go. So this is how I started out today for folks who are tuning in now. <laughs> Joe, oh, Joe saying, oh, the felt needs you. That's nice. Oh, Joe. <laughs> I'm just peeling away the resist. So before the live stream, there's this resist fluid that I used, painted it on. It's kind of, as you can see, like a rubbery kind of thing. And wherever I painted it, the paint doesn't go through. And you can use resist fluid in lots of different ways. You could paint a piece first and then paint on resist. So you get layers of colors uh, similar to what might happen with a, a print kind of situation that you're making. I certainly I'm no expert, but I enjoy playing with it. And I think there's something beautiful about things revealing themselves because you never quite know how it will turn out. So there's always a little element of surprise when you peel it off. Oh, interesting. And Jenny's saying when learning cursive in school, 
I would get my hand slapped because my cursive leaned back rather than forward. Jenny, I am so sorry to hear that. There's a lot of folks who experienced that kind of violence in school for so many different and you didn't deserve that. And I'm sorry that it happened to you. And I hope that you were able to hold on to what made your cursive writing unique as you move forward. In spite of that violence that you did not deserve, that no one deserves. People can be so strange, so cruel sometimes. But people can also be incredibly amazing and lovely and inspiring. Yeah, at the end of the day, with all the difficult things we've experienced and survived in life, that is something that I hold on to. The good that is out there brings great meaning, helps make meaning of those difficult things in particular. And I love that your cursive leaned back rather than forward. That sounds, I, I wonder if you were left-handed or what's the word when you can use both left and right? It seems like... Uh, that would be a natural thing for someone who is writing with their left hand as opposed to the right. Interesting. And it's beautiful. Why not? Why not? And Nicole saying, when you have an equation where you are using multiplication and an X, it's hard to tell the X from the multiplication sign unless it is in cursive. Ha ha. Thank you for clarifying that. That. Thank you. I was wondering why it was good to write with cursive in math. And Nicole, you just explained it. Thank you so much. And I think that also reveals that perhaps I don't do math very often, that I wouldn't quite understand that. Mm. Yes, true. So this is my little piece of hope. Let's see if I can have a little focus in here. Let's see. So I think folks can see that, yes? We have hope, we have green, we have spring. We have these feelings of, of newness, of rebirth, of new opportunities, new potential. These are all things that inspire me, that help me to feel grounded this time of year. And when there are darker days than this when there's or rain clouds and windy skies and or when I'm just waking up and feeling gray and windy on the inside. It's nice to be reminded of this. It's nice to be reminded of the fact that new things are on their way. There is hope, always hope on the horizon. Always hope inside of us, I think too. That's what makes that change possible. The fact that we move and we grow and we learn and we discover, we fall back, we move forward. That's all hope. That's all hopeful. It's all possibility and potential. And I think Jenny is asking, what was I peeling off? I think I was peeling off resist fluid. So it's also sometimes called masking fluid. You can find it at art stores or craft stores will sometimes have it. Sometimes it will come in a liquid form that you dip a paintbrush into. Just a heads up, I wouldn't use um, a fancy paintbrush. Definitely use a paintbrush that is old or you're retiring soon because it kind of makes the brush a little wonky. Um, so yeah, you, you paint it on and wherever you paint it on, once it dries, that becomes an area where uh, any additional layers of paint or color won't stay. So you peel it off once it dries and you have this wonderful effect. And sometimes artists will use it in watercolors like landscapes to add extra punchy like sections of color or really st like striking lines. I've seen it used in landscapes, for example, in grasses to have, you know, those beautiful thin whiplash pieces of the blades of grass that are there. And you can paint those in, of course, but sometimes using the natural color of the paper underneath or the, you know, the natural, like the colors of the paint you have underneath other layers, it just breaks through uh, with a little more 
directness. Little, it's a little bit bolder. I love using it in things like this and just playing with different shapes and lines. Of course, you don't need masking fluid to do this too. You could also use pieces of um, masking tape. Again, masking fluid, masking tape. You can cut out pieces of masking tape to create shapes or letters or symbols and do the exact same thing and wherever the tape is. Of course, once it dries and once you peel it off, you'll have that, you'll be revealing that paper that was underneath it. And then there's an old technique that a lot of us learned in kindergarten where you take white crayons or white oil pastels or crayons or pastels that match the color of the paper you're using or even wax candles. So like a, a clear wax candle, a white wax candle, for example, and you color in parts of the paper and wherever you have that waxy quality as a film over top of your paper, the paint won't absorb in. So you're creating that resist again. You're creating that blank spade that will pop through once your painting is finished. So it's a fun technique that anyone can try. You can use masking fluid, masking tape. You can use wax or uh, crayons or oil pastels to create the same effect. Each one will have a slightly different quality, but that's okay. If you're interested, I, I totally invite you to give it a try and experiment with what you have on hand at home and see what works. And again, it's a lovely thing for me. It helps me free my mind, tells that inner critic to be quiet and just allows me to paint add color to the page without having to kind of assign myself any outcome, if that makes sense. Once the resist is on there, it'll take care of itself. And I always feel confident and happy with the results, even when it goes a little, you know, even when there are some surprises, it, it's always a pleasant surprise. And Joe says, I was always confused that a capital Q in cursive is two, yet I would just use a capitalized Q. Joe, I'm with you. Yeah, some things in cursive, you know, there's a mystery in everything. Mm. And cursive isn't for everyone. That's okay. I, <laughs> one of the things I love about artists, a lot of the artists I know, or creative folks I know, tend to combine things and uh, combine handwriting, like printing and cursive. You just like, we draw things from all the creative traditions we have to create our own way of communicating. And that, I think I love that the most. I, you know, you can do one thing and do it really, really well. You can do many things and do them really, really well. But I, I think one of my favorite things is seeing how creatives mash things up and create something completely new and completely unique out of what they know, what their own experiences are. So who knows, maybe we'll send out some snail mail. Maybe you can create something special for someone you know, mix it up, mash it up, do what feels right. But yeah, if you have an opportunity to share some art with someone, please do. And if you have an opportunity to mail something out to someone, please do. Such a lovely surprise, such a great thing to see in a mailbox. Now, everyone, our time is coming to an end here. Oh, I always love this time. It's always so difficult for me to say goodbye to everyone, but I will be back. And you can, if you'd like to, uh, I guess the next time there's an opportunity to hang out uh, will be this Thursday night with Nafise on our wonderful Thursday night evening art jam from 7 to 8 p.m. And on Monday, again, we will be having a workshop, a Zoom workshop at 10 a.m. with Marta and other placement students. And I'll be there too, making art alongside everyone else. Bring along a wrapped canvas if you want to take part. So it can be something small that you pick up from the dollar store, but I think it's important that it's a wrapped canvas board that have some space so you can sew and stitch through it, puncture it with holes. Um, yeah, and then Tuesday morning, that's the next time you'll see me in a virtual art hive Zoom a wake up Zoom from 9.30 to 10.30. So there are so many more opportunities to create and connect coming up this week and the next. If you miss one, it's okay, there'll be another one. But I do hope we get to see you soon in one of those wonderful creative spaces that we are, we are creating together. How amazing is that? Aw, oh, I'm so glad too, Joe. So Joe's saying, I'm so glad we had this time together. Absolutely. Likewise, to everyone who's participated and joined in, 
whether you're creating at home on your own and listening and watching, or whether you're participating in the chat as you create or do whatever you need to do, thank you so much for being here and sharing this space and contributing to the creative energy, the wonderful creative energy of this time we have together. I always leave this space feeling energized and inspired. I hope you do too. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone was able to take a little bit of hope away with them as well. And Carlos, oh, Carlos. Carlos says, this has been lovely. I like wrapping up with Carlos because Carlos just always manages to say things in such a beautiful way. He says, thanks for the space as always. Thanks to everyone for what they've shared on here. It's been awesome to be a part of this. And thanks to those who are just watching as well. I agree. It's been great to be with you too. Thanks again. And I hope you all have an awesome and safe week. Likewise. And Simone, oh, wonderful. You enjoyed your first session with everyone. Well, you're welcome back anytime to whether a Zoom room or to another live stream just like this. Folks, take care of yourselves. Stay creative. Look for those hopeful moments and even the darkest days. And until we can connect and create with one another again in person, I look forward to connecting and creating with you right here online in this beautiful virtual art hive that we create together. There's a lot of creation going on there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that. And have a wonderful day, folks. See you again soon sometime. Bye.